Yeah, we were able to hear you. Anyway, yeah, thank so you. I'll share my screen. Oh, yeah. So is it visible? Yeah. You're able to see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, and it's like readable, right? Like it's fonts good enough or like much better. Yeah. Zone. Yeah. We're able to, we're able to. Yeah. I'm able to see. Yeah. Uh, so basically what happens is like uh, we'll give a good view of like how to work on metal. Like the base. So at the end, uh, he, like the PDF which he showed, which consists of all the parameters, value, and the graphs which he showed. So they are all outcomes of certain uh, analysis which we do. So there are like three of them until now, which are most used. And like since it's open source, so even you can come up with your own quantum analysis and submit it to them. And if they accept it, so yeah, it will be like one of the feature in metal which you have contributed to so basically why do we need for the analysis and simulation is is like uh like it's mentioned earlier like you can design in your uh, qubit size like the pad size the gap between them so at the end so there are certain parameters which you need to tune to get your like to get your own design specifications so some being are like the qubit frequency and harmonicity and then there comes in the coupling stent, which is like the chi value. So couplings is like it between it's it has various like whether like it talks about the couplings between the qubit and the buses. So buses connect different qubits with each other. So when a qubit is in contact with the buses, so how wet could they are coupled together? Then when and when you have when qubits coupled up with resonators, that is with the readouts. So again, you need to talk about how they are coupled together. And then and then the resonators with the external lines, which to which we suddenly pulses. So all these things contribute to a lot on, more on the coupling strength. And the need is that like if you have a very good coupled system with each other, so there is like more better efficiency, like how it can actually work, like it's first. So there are majorly three analyses. Like one is the capacitive analysis, uh, where you come up with a capacitance matrix and then you analyze it over there. And you have uh, EPR, which is like uh, eigen mode or like energy participation ratio, where it talks about like how is the energy is distributed among the chip and all. And then you have impedance analysis, which talks more about how your effective your transmission lines are. So. Uh, basically what we do is like we'll start up with the capacitance analysis so uh we are always like we are aware of what lumped circuit basically means so lumped circuit basically means you have like an electrical circuit a bit anything and you draw it down to its like indiv like simplest level like how you can represent it using the lumped elements which we say that like they being inductor capacitors capacitors resistors and all so how we can you know draw an equivalent lump circuit model of it like you might have a higher complicated version of an electrical circuit where you might have like transmission lines coming in together but eventually when you can draw a lump model of a transmission line that is you can have an inductor and uh, then you have resistors coming in together with parallel and then again you have a down inductor you have down so basically that's like eventually modeling an electrical network using these lumps elements is like lump circuits so what is capacitance analysis is that basically if you want to get information more about the anonymity and the frequency of your qubit and then how do we actually do it like you further you get information about the personal limit personal limit is basically on the readout section when you have your readout uh, lc oscillators resonators out there so you use parametric amplifiers to get like you amplify the signals and that's all that's there so how we, it talks more about the readout part and then it more or less you talk about like how your resonators and buses are linked with each other so uh, capacitance like if we just see it's in the initial stage so like whenever we have two metallic plates coming in near contact with each other that is there is a gap between them so it's very inherent property that they will develop a capacitance between them and thus does so happens in transmon qubit also because you have various metallic connections coming in together like from the readout buses and to the qubit you have like metallic connections between them and there is an inert medium that is air between them which acts as a dielectric 
like at like at the minute scale you might have like because of metallic connections you have a capacitance being developed over there so that is how we talk about this capacitive analysis so what it actually do is like uh we have a design where you have few components and you draw your parts and other stuff and then you go for the ansys q3d uh, mod like solver which is like basically uh, you it's like a, one of the solvers which we use and then what we do is like we auto identify the like you render your elements you set up the simulation and then you obtain the capacitance matrices and then again you send it back because you know like theoretically what should be like good enough value of like uh, inductance of the josephson junction or like which is lg cj generalistic capacitance of the josephson junction frc frequencies so yeah of the buses and of the readout resonators and of the qubit so you know and estimate how what values they should be and if you really don't obtain them you go back again you like you again you modify your components set up the simulation obtain the capacitance matrices and then again you come back so what is basically a lump oscillator model is basically on the left you can see you have the transform qubit out there you have pad 1 and pad 2 then with the buses coming in together and then those curved lines are like the resonators for yeah so if we draw that into the lump model which is denoted on the right hand side you will see like you have the transform in between and there is pad 1 and pad 2 and then we have like on the readout side which is like this particular side uh, we have the lc oscillators so if you see all those connections like all the metallic connections are connected with a capacitor in between this is to denote that there are two metallic connections and this capacitor is developed inside that to denote that we use this and so basically everything like we do is like we convert like when we having a classic build to quantum analogy we convert it into the hamiltonian and we study how it varies how to, like the fluctuations in hamiltonian so we try to define the hamiltonian of the entire system so your uh, h cap uh, h hat system a denotes the hamiltonian for this particular transform qubit and then h cat h uh, hat external denotes the uh, hamiltonian about this particular uh, this uh, the radial uh, resonators and uh, this uh, uh, others internal is the, like h hat internal is basically when you have all these elements like not just one transform and one radial resonator when you have many coming in together so the internal how like the hamiltonian between them so this is how like you try to develop the hamiltonian of the entire system so you have like uh, like you have a design it's been rendered on using q3d like you develop it entirely over here this is substrate over here basically silicon and then you do a, you develop mesh of it and then at the end you get your capacitance matrices value so n0 n1 n2 and n3 they denote the different nodes that is where the connections are like how many our capacitance you have out there so and then you study the capacitance matrix and then i can go back to your design uh model the components the sizes and then again you run the simulation so that's how you do like that is what uh, metal makes it easier for us so and the second analysis which is eigenmann analysis which is majorly energy participation ratio so not going into much detail of it because it really involves a lot of mathematical calculation like so what actually do is like we actually render the qubits and and they like the, how it's coupled with different uh, components into the eigen mode simulation that is basically like you convert it into the like you get the energy spectrum of it and then you basically perform the epr so like the what information we get from this analysis is that you get regarding the readout and the resonators bus frequencies because all these are like of uh, uh, resonators so they'll have different modes which like we like interaction oscillators and resonators also we know like that at different frequency like the different modes are there so to identify which modes of operation it is actually working on so we get this done so and what it tells more about is that how is how the energy is actually stored inside all these resonators and the transmon when it's in a working situation so this is like one of the first like the earlier capacitance and matrix analysis isn't a quantum analysis but it just gives like a brief view but uh, this is like one of the quantum analysis which actually bridges the gap from like you have an electromagnetic oscillator to actually developing an 
like to connect it with the block sphere. So if you see like a uh, hatch at full, so the first term, yeah. So the first term omega m minus i k m, it's basically talks about the modes of resonators, and then you have other parameters of internal modes and all like when interconnections with them. So this is like visually of it. So it's it's not an approximation as we had it earlier. Like we used to develop an approximate lumped model of it, but it actually is like the real analysis which you're doing. And this actually gives like a uh, like budget about the energy distribution over the system. And uh, and like it said, like it's fully automated. Like you can have it's an open like pipe here, link it to there, and then you actually get it. So why how do we do this one? Is that you have a transmon in between and then you have the buses out here which connects it to a different transmon and then you have read out resonators over here so what does so happen is that each element has an energy associated with it and so when you have converting into the quantum analogy of it so we try to write the hamiltonians of each of the parts and then you derive an ex like the entire hamiltonian picture of the entire system and then you perform a simulation out of it and that's how it goes and coming down to the impedance analysis so why do we need impedance is yes, because we are using transmission lines and uh, cpws that is coplanar waveguides to communicate with it so what do uh, like what these are basically these are like like they allow electromagnetic waves to travel along them and with like much more better efficiency so how do we do it like we find the S matrix. S matrix is called skating matrix. So, which basically means that uh, you like you a transmission is like it's like a tube. So you have input and output ports coming out there, and you basically like in microwave engineering, what we do is like we the current and the voltages. It's taken like an a wave which propagates. So you study how the voltage and current varies from an input to the output wave, like input and output ports. So how there's a fluctuation between them. So because inside there are like internal reflections coming on together and there are many hindrances, like, like it said, like uh, there might be some discontinuity in the transmission line. So you study how efficiently you were able to send a wave and read it out the back and how if there were any differences between them and like how if things actually goes. So basically we use this analysis to like to study the quality factor of a readout resonator. So this is like, if we go like in much more into it, it's microwave engineering part where we like we see the S parameter values and then we are able to predict how efficient your transmission line or coplanar of your guides are. So this is uh, in general more about the, uh, yeah, so. So, uh, yeah, that's nice, actually. Oh, uh, I was opening one second. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So if you do, like, uh, haven't really done, like, because these things take, like, the dances, and they take a quite a while on running down them. So I haven't really done the, like, I can't show because it takes time over here. And, yeah. So if like, this is like one of the, like which notebooks are there in the case kit metal, you can obviously do. So we use, we import the toolboxes, then we draw like the CPWs and with the defined size and all. And then basically you, we, try, we are making a four qubit chip over here. So we have four CPWs coming in, like if you run it. So if she, uh, you'll get something like this out here. So if you see over here, like you have like all the Q1s to like, all the four uh, things over here and then you have a cpw which is like your interconnections between them like which is how do we communicate so what uh if you see if i zoom in over here like all these things like even this connection is like two metals in coming so that is why they like if we have like inter like if we have like there are two like two metallic plates so they are inherent capacitance which are being developed among them so if we really do with the analysis like run it over here like uh like further if i do into like if i and like uh, it takes time so i won't be able to show it on a real time next time we'll, we'll have it done so yeah so this is like you can explore 
like the different analysis things going on over here so this was like major of the analysis part like i didn't go into much detail because this like more of the mathematics part so yeah Uh, any questions so the, yeah i mean uh, this uh, design uh, after that the qubit uh, kind of uh, whether the because the, co the coherence nature and the coherence time and stuff also we can simulate or find out from this uh, yeah yeah simulated uh, circuit okay. yeah 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 because like these are like the properties which we really want the information about so yeah. Uh, all this, like suppose, like from capacitance analysis, we can get the information yeah. about the qubit frequency, like the different capacitance between them. So each analysis has an output of a particular variable, like which is like a design parameter. So uh, we can even get the information about like the t1 and the t2 times. We can calculate it, like with the analysis. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that is how we do it, and. Uh, all these like each like each analysis if we do it like when we have later sessions like when we really perform the analysis like we'll be able to like much more explain in a but better way like how do we actually what are the outcomes of each of the analysis uh, wow okay for a point i would like to add so this actually gives us uh, only a rough estimate of the t1 time t2 cannot be calculated because it uh, like it depends more on the uh, like uh, the zero point energy fluctuations in the, the, the quantumness of the thing. So yep. yeah, like that is not possible to simulate uh, exactly. So T2 time we have to find through experiments only. Like so once the chip is uh, real design, yeah, real yeah, chip is it manufactured, then we do the pulse level calibration and stuff. That gives us. Oh yeah. Proper T1 and T2 time, but this this can be used to give an estimate. Uh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, the complete design is possible. That's nice, right? Yeah. yeah. Before or even. Yeah. And uh, they uh, they IBM or uh, any one of uh, they provide the best designed. Uh, uh the circuits uh in the available for us to see if you are designing ourselves that's another thing but already existing designs which uh, the best uh, the parameters tuned parameters uh, uh it's available for us to review at least i don't think they do so the only okay. things that are available are there in the tutorials folder in the uh, the repository so yeah. okay uh, other than that, it's not available because I mean it's it's a proprietary design. Proprietary, right? yeah, yeah. So, and I might be the research papers also may not have much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So papers like they, they would have uh, the basic Some results, parameters, but uh, when it comes to advanced and like properly utilizing the system, uh, that uh, that kind of design like. Has to be developed. Uh, Proprietary. Yeah. And changing the parameters. And so, so that's what. So basically, metal uh, gives you an opportunity to make that process easier. So before yeah. this thing, like we had to sit and design uh, each and every parameter. Like you would have to have like three, four softwares open at the same time. And one you are designing, then you export the design, then you import it in some other software, and then you optimize that, and then again take uh, the results and then optimize, and then again export, then import in other all those things. But metal yep. is it's like uh, like one solution to everything. So what it does is you create the design, and uh, you just write one line of code. It sends it to ANSYS. Uh, or whatever HRSS, and uh, then it gets the results automatically from there. So, like you don't have to do this iterative process manually. The code yeah. handles it for you. So that's the benefit. Yes, amazing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so <it's... laughs> you guys did a very good job. Like the complete uh, uh, taking out and designing and. Uh, running it so i think let's see and we'll set up some of the simple stuff and yeah, thank you, thank you.